if uh, no one wants to say something, I will start. <laughs> I will share my screen. Screen, sorry. Uh, we like to share the old. Uh, so do you see it? And if I move here, did you see like uh, so? This is VS Code. This is one of the example of what R can look like in VS Code. Um, this. Uh, uh, if you are new, I do not recommend it because you have lots of stuff to, to, to make it comfortable. I will say, I mean, not a lot, but still too much. But this is we can we can we could like play with it. I mean, use it, or we can also use. Uh, that's what I will use. R Studio. Let's look like that. Did you all see it? Uh, my version is a bit different than the default one. Uh, because uh, the default one, I think it's console. Uh, I like uh, on big train having the console. Uh, it's here, like see, if for people who don't know, on the right. Uh, so this is like the um, for people who do not know, like you have like a document and you can send commands um, through R like that. And I use also Emac, but I have not installed in this machine. So let's keep it fresh. Uh, let's me, I think I have restarted it. Um, so one, 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 one thing that they didn't mention in the book, but that's useful to do is sometimes you can check session info. It's a small function that's providing information of your R session. Uh, maybe, did, did you see well? Should I increase the size? I will, I will move that zoom here and increase the um, so tools. Uh, what is it? Global option, I guess. Uh, appearance and put it to 14. So it's a bit better. So you can use session uh, info like to have an inversion. I see like, so I'm running the R version 4.2. If you want to interact like it's self, as well in the chat or like I do not follow the chat. Or the vertical line by going to tool global option code display and check. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with them, but <laughs> if I want to feel more like you mean uh, VS Code, I, I like the I like them. But yeah, good 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 uh, good stuff. Just what it's important to see is like so. Well, I'm running on the Mac. That's uh, weirdly sadly uh, freaking M1. Um, uh, this you will not see it a lot, but if you are doing like some uh, heavy computing, you will maybe change that. This is the math. Uh, this is the, the math library that use it for like matrix operation. Well, uh, I'm running on the, on the standard that use US uh, UTF. And by default, this is the basic package you have. And because uh, currently uh, on the book club, we also have this one because like this is the, uh, uh, the book club is managed as a package and the package loads some stuff. So that's it. So. Uh, that was the tour of the quick tour of Air Studio for people who do not know. Let's go back. I hit Mac. Right. Uh, here you are. So the goal today will be like learning a bit the fun, what we call the that fundamental data model in GIS, uh, which is vector and raster. For a lot of you, I think it would be very easy. Uh, and both of this, uh, we are going to use SF package and Terra package, respectively, SF for vectors and rasters, uh, mostly for Terra. Even if in Terra have uh, some capacity to handle vectors. OK. Just to be clear, a model is just a way to represent reality. So imagine like you want to map to, to, to map something. Uh, but if you use a vector model, you use points, line, and polygon. So a point is just a one, just no no surface, no uh, length objects, just a point. Line is point connected, and that's make just uh, a length. And polygon usually is unclosed line, uh, that's make like some surfaces. And the raster model is it's different. It's instead of like drawing uh, this basic three uh, entity type of entities, uh, it divides the surface into like some pixel of cell of a constant size, nearly all the time constant size, uh, and they they attribute some value. Uh, so they are frequent when you are like using aerial photography, remote sensing, 
or sometimes when you want to speed up computing also it's good to go to a raster format for various reasons uh just this you have default but it's uh uh both both have like advantages and disadvantages and mostly if you want to pick a model uh and use an, an, another one depend of your use cases the domain of application and to be fair in, in one project it's fairly common to use boss um let's go to i will switch i will try to switch to the um, uh to ask so uh we can we can like load uh if we load sf so it's called library but what i'm gonna do is like calling the library where i store my package to load uh attach one package it's already loaded and when uh, sf is loading is telling you like what's upstream library is loading so he's loading uh, maybe you will have different one like i think this installation is is fairly recent so i have like except in jedal i think I have like uh, the last version of Geos. So GDAO, people sometimes call it Goodall, or the, the old school people call it Goodall, but I'm calling GDAL uh, or GDAL as a French, <laughs> but do not mind it. And Proj and um, this, like uh, I have SF, uh, we will discuss that later, but I have SF, uh, S2 loaded, loaded. So let's load the other packages. Did you, uh, if you have any trouble loading the package, feel free to tell us we can manage that so yeah I, I can copy past them directly but I could also like uh it can uh like like that uh, I think it's tab enter in Mac yeah uh command enter so they are loaded um you can suppress this message if needed also okay so no if I if for example I go back and I ask session info I have loaded uh mm -hmm. I have loaded, I have attached uh, SP data, Tira, SF, and more package behind it. Via namespace. So you can see there here. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this should be fairly straightforward. So vectors. Uh, a small warning in R, a lot of people use the word vectors. A vector in R is uh, what also people sometimes call an array in C. It's basically like, let's say, if I want something like uh, combine one, two, three, four, uh, this is also a vector in R. Uh, so, both uh, term can be a bit misleading. I mean, not misleading, but like be careful. Like you have like the data type in R, that's a vector. And um, the words uh, and um, the data model uh, in GIS, which is um, a vector. Okay. So <clears throat> first, uh, every ge uh, every geographic geographic vector data model is based on points located with a coordinate reference system. We'll see a bit. We have already seen a bit what it was. We'll see more a bit into these chapters, and we will see it a lot in the chapter eight also. So, like it's it's gonna be we're gonna repeat it until like uh, everything makes more sense and you become familiar. A good example of a point like the center of London, which is here, a, a bus stop, a tree in a park, a pylon, everything that you can like modelize as a point. Obviously, it's neither a point. To, uh, a, a tree can be like a surfaces. And you can modelize also the surfaces if it needed. If, for example, you walk more, you are more interested in the surface of its leaf and its canopy. But yeah, the idea is like it's a model, and sometimes you represent them as a point. Uh, then uh, we can so link this point to represent more complex objects. So if I link point A to point B, it's become a line. And if I add another point, we can complexify the line to build roads, administrative boundaries. Uh, yeah, I used um, I, I I used um, the same uh, I called the same uh, graphic in the book, so I can show you. I was lazy. If you do not know, like you can directly like the the book is calling like some images uh, that store in GitHub, and I have used the link directly to show it in the book. I know in our notes. Uh, our studio, where are you? I oh, know. 
Okay, here. So what's it's important with the uh, coordinate reference system is usually uh, here, like you have a, a geographic one and here you have a, a projected one. Once again, so I will repeat myself on that. But yeah, so the blue point is the origin. Usually like this is why you, you are starting, like, you know, like in this projected one, the origin of it where the zero of both the X, Y or Easting. Um, so nothing so he's thing like it's because we are going to east we start at zero and it's make more sense to increase than going negative and nothing we are going north and um so this is the the y axis and the x one and here this is the same in um in uh in geographic one except like uh, this is angle we are using angle i don't know if it's correct so sf provide class uh, for this kind of data, so it's it's particular object um, in R. We'll not go too much into it, uh, and uh, it's provide interface with the GDAL, Proj, Geos, and S2, uh, which is the usually C plus plus library um, that uh, that we have seen uh, when we are loading SF. Okay, question remark. I do not see you, so if everyone like is. Is doing well. Okay, so now we have loaded SF. So let's go. Uh, we can. I have like some notes here. Uh, the vignettes where are they? We can Google everything, but R has a nice system. Like when you are loading a package, like let's see, uh, for example, uh, here if I call vignette, it's a function, and I ask for a specific package with an argument. Package is the argument, and I will provide. Let's see if I use Terra instead. I've never done it, so let's see. No vignette form, so Terra does not have vignette. See, but if I do deployers, another package, hopefully they will have it. So they have a vignette that have names that I can call. See, call wise, base, compatibility, grouping, deployer, etc., etc. Uh, let's go a bit. Too fast. Look, if we are interested into our uh, simple features, so SF stands for simple features. It's an open standard. It's shared like um, if you use QGIS, it uses SF. If you use PostGIS, it uses SF. I'm uh, not sure if S reuse it, but uh, I'm not sure I'm 100 percent, but I'm I'm sure at 95 <laughs> percent that they also use this standard. Uh, so it's a fairly common. Uh, let's see. Whatever. A typo here, we correct. Um, and uh, yes, um, so let's go back to um, another one here. <clears throat> so, yeah, you can access the vignette. Well, I will do it just for the sake of doing it, but. Uh, a typo. Here we are, and here we can have like uh, a vignette describing simple features uh, with every every stuff you need. An example a bit later. So it's nice. It's a nice function when you work offline and you want to check some information. Okay. No. Uh, so we what we are gonna do? We are gonna start doing a first plot. So this data world came from another package that's called SP data. That's provide like some data. We can check the list of it also if you want, but I think we are a bit on time. And if I call plot world, so when I was loading like when I was loading here uh, SP data, uh, I'll basically like give access my R session have access to objects that was that were not loaded in memory but were loaded when I called them. Uh, so and one of them was plots. And if I call plots, um, R will draw me a plot of uh, so you have like 10 attributes. So let's we can like see a bit more like what world look like. Let's do a world a view. So view is another function, sometimes useful. 
So here, like you have like a data frame, uh, kind of the data frames that this, that have like the same name we have seen like on the previous one, ISO A2, name long, continent, region, et cetera, et cetera, until we go to the geom one, which is a particular column that store the geometry. And we have other, other piece of information. So we should have uh, nine, uh, 10 attributes and one more for the geom one, if you see here. Okay. So this is why like by default, it's difficult to represent 10 attributes or 10 because like this is three par three, it's easier. So it's not very great, but it's sometimes uh, when you have a data set and you have no idea what it is, it provides you a very quick summary. Uh, so an SF, ob uh, so SF is also like a data frame. So if we are using summary, but we can use more. Like I can also use STR, which dis displays the structure of an object. So we see it's a fairly complex object. So it, the first colon is ISO A2, which is a characters and contains few example of value. And then we have everything. And then we came to Geom, which you see is an object a bit more complex because it contains lists with attributes. Anyway, so this is just like the, the let's say, and if I want summary also, I can also do summary on the whole data set, which will provide me according to the type so, uh, for uh, object of character, which is difficult to, to give provide summaries. But if it was categorical, it will provide something. And you see like as numerical, it provide the mean, the first quartile, the median, uh, the minimum, et cetera, et cetera. And also interesting, the numbers of ANA, which is missing values or non-available. And for the geom, it returned me like uh, information about the uh, EPSG, which is the, which will describe it, which is an identifier uh, from the authorities that's uh, identified the CRS. And we have like stuff like that. So, and if you want, like, it's a data frame, so you can like um, use common tools that's used, used by data frames. So if I do world, uh, let's say is a two, it will just return a uh, vectors of every first uh, two letters. Okay. Oh, so there's th this kind of object are easy to subset. You can subset like usually with R with a, the brackets and the first part stand for the row, the second part stand for column. Let's do it because I think it's interesting. Let's do one because I want the first. I let's do. I want the first and let's say the first three, and uh, I want the fourth to the sixth one. Uh, I I could also like generate uh, for the number three, five, seven. I just okay. So it it re, it still keep this. Uh, it still uh, keep me that it's a simple picture collection. It still keep me like the fact that it's multi polygon and it keep me like the continent subregion and area. And even if I mention like just three column, it still keep the geom one, which is a, a characteristic of the safe object. Uh, so if you want to remove the, the geom uh, column, you will need to drop it. We'll see that later. Okay. Do we have question, remark? Okay. Why simple fixtures and why not using SP if you are an old, old timers uh, um, using R? I mean, not necessarily old timers, like because uh, SP started like in 2005, which is not that long, if I remember correctly. And the book, I mean, helping a lot of people using it was uh, was 2008, which is a 30, I mean, 40 years now ago. Uh, yeah, I already said all. Uh, Nearly all the GIS application use it. So it's very easy to exchange data from them and make your code like more easy to share. Why SF versus SP? Well, SP uses another kind of way to storing data, especially special, I mean, storing special data. You basically have a list that store the, the geometry in one object and um, the, the attributes. So let's say the name, the um in the world in the if you check the world data i mean i could do it if you are interested in it let me think quickly let's see 
world uh, sp and i will do uh, as world if i remember correctly and special class uh, see if i'm correct see i have no a type which is special polygon and if i look at it it will be different so it will be it's a list that's contain a data frame that contain all the attributes and that contain also another uh, another list that contain um, all my polygon and if i got it it contain like all the information about every polygon so it's multi polygon because like the con i mean some country have island etc cetera, etc cetera. uh it's a big <laughs> i will not check all of them but yeah you can you can basically just so it was like a different kind of object and if i if i um instead um world uh, sf i will save it in memory uh just world uh, oh yeah sorry world yeah you see just like a common uh it's a type sf and it's just like uh, 177 observations times the number of variable and if i click on it i have my data frame so very different kind of way of uh, storing information and to be fair storing everything in the data frame with just uh, this special column of list uh, make uh, job way easier so make job way easier uh, fast reading and writing better plotting performance uh, i have said uh, sf object can be treated as data frame uh, sf function are consistent and intuitive well this depends on the perspective and this work well with what with the pipe the new r pipe but it work also uh, well with the old um, i mean not all but those are pipe even if they are a bit different Oh yeah, this is how you transform it, and you can change. Uh, um, you can change back with just the ST. Okay. So basic mapping here, the cartographer will not be like very very um, <laughs> too impressed, but we can easily like select a piece. So here, uh, let's go slowly on that a bit. So assuming like some of you are beginners, I will go a bit slowly on that. So what? Uh, let let's say like what? Let, here this is so I will index or subset uh, the world data frame <coughs> with a special other vectors. Let's do it once. Here, so it's basically return. Uh, so Asia is a, if we if we go and see like this uh, this file. If you see continents, so every country can be described as part of a continent. And when I type it world, uh, the dollar sign, I mean, like I'm accessing, uh, it's a shortcut for world um, continents. It's a bit, not exactly a shortcut, but you can think. So here you see like the <laughs> my geom current ticket, but it returned me. Uh, every um so that's why it's not exactly a shortcut every uh con every uh continent uh where the country are located so if i do that it returned me a vector that return true or false for every line let's say like the first one the pg they are not uh in the continent of, uh asia it, it just check equal asia or not so this returned me a boolean vectors like just true and false and this is what it's used here to just return an object world asia that just contain uh, every um, country that's located in asia so that's it so now i i will just union them and if i can check the object asia no, I just have one, not even line. Uh, I lose all my attribute, but I have just the Asia. So I've, I've performed, a, I've union all the geometry to just one. And I can plot them here. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit slow. So how does it work? Uh, let's go slowly. Let's redo it. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, so 
Uh, do everyone is familiar with our markdown? Because this is just like a this is an, a notebook, kind of a notebook. Um, and it, it can plot also like the results of this cut, particular cut that's called a code, a code chunk, uh, a chunk. And uh, it returns below the, the text, but you can also do it in the console here. No, control V and eight Mac. And it returns it here, but I can also uh, uh, export it later if I want or publish it, et cetera, et cetera. So here we just have like, this is very basic, basic map. You don't need like to be like astonished by it. But the what is important to note is like the so SF also provide like method. So the plot function is also used in R. Like if you want to plot something like an object in R, let's say like plot. Um, I will just do a vector of going to one to ten and another one that's um, that gener so it's a ten. Let's see if I'm not <laughs> so uh, because I, I keep the reset one, <laughs> the reset equal fault. It didn't reset my the way it presents my um my uh, my my basic plot function. So anyway, so it plot uh yeah, I just wanted to plot x time y and except it made this weird weird shape. So let's go back to um, that. <clears throat> So you see what you see like what does the results equal for in the, the in the call of the plot uh, and the plot function work basically like by um, uh, by stacking layers so I'm just plucking one layers and by doing r equal true oops sorry I should have done that here yeah if I have not collected the first one it will not work here I just added on the top of the layers the new one. So it's a very old school way of doing it. Um, so you will see later in the book more advanced concepts. As though you can use ggplot2 or as though you use tmap. But uh, it's too many, all, I guess. Uh, both of them use another concept that allow you to modify the objects uh, and not stacking stuff on top of them. I don't know if it might myself clear, but base plot is still a powerful tool. Here, like this is an example, uh, or we can just um, just like uh, basic. We are the base layers. We are defining like some 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 size of a point of a dot. We are uh, we are calculate some centroid, and we are gonna plot uh, this centroid with the uh, a size that's. Um, that's um, fluctuate with the sets, which is basically the, the square root of the population divided by them, because we are using a superficie. Okay, uh, like you have also like this is uh, something that's oh, let's go back like maybe to the. So you have also like um, <clears throat> well discuss subset. I already discussed it, so I do not need to do it. Uh, expand bb is a nice function that was added by uh, so if you for example do help I, uh, let's see if it's work i will just have like the base uh, the generic plotting if you check the arguments of uh, the basic plotting having too much you will not see like the expand bb if you want to check and the expand bb you have to ask the specific method that sf provide uh, to have like C, it will be, uh, will it be here? Question, should be somewhere. I think it's somewhere. Um, was correct or not? Yeah, so here. Okay. So this is this this is something that uh, when you call plot R is on an SF object, R is smart enough to know like, in, Instead, what you are calling is plot SF. But if you want to know more about the L, what's 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 the argument you can provide to this function, uh, well, even if you just do plot, uh, or just like I think like of what I have done, plot there is a lot in R, so it does not help. 
But here is smart enough, like, do you want the plot SF object? Because you know what I've loaded in my environment, or do you want the general plotting? Or other like, I have loaded Terra, so you suffer also me this function. Okay, let's go back to, uh, so that's it. So this is very like quick, quick and dirty, like localization uh, function. Geometry type. Uh, do you? Uh, so we already seen them. Like, do you remember them? Should should uh, can no? I should eye my screen and ask you. <laughs> so before, like, they can be. So they exist in two kind of flavors. One it is binary. Uh, let's uh, let's do one for example. I'm a bit lazy, so just yes, yes. binary. And let's see uh, if I remember correctly. Let's tip point. Let's see, like zero one. Oh, oh yes, I'm stupid. Yeah, you are. Uh, SF is very verbose, so like you have the binary version, which is not very helpful. Uh, but uh, I have also advantage. Uh, I mean. Uh, the, readability, the readability is not its, it's, its main goal, let's say. Um, so for most of the time, we'll work in what the other, other, uh, other way it's in text. So we can store them like other way. So SF, so the simple feature standard have, I think, 18 uh, way of drawing stuff. Uh, we focus just on seven of them and SF only have seven of them. If you want to know what your, oops, does not work. I don't know why I link to the wrong uh, link. So I will have to correct them. Uh, they are here, by the way. Basic geometry, the POSGIS manual. Uh, so basically, you are missing all the curve, uh, some multi surface. And I think you are also, we are also missing, I don't know where they are. All the mesh and uh, tri triangle and stuff like that. I don't know where they are, but they are where well, are they? Where well, are they? But the, oh, I can't find them here. But yeah, usually like you are missing like all the triangle stuff, mesh stuff. Anyway, oops, sorry, uh, not this one. I was here. Where is it? Where are you? Come on. Well, I can stay here. Uh, yeah, but just that, that's not good link. Um, okay, so this is the way like the standard described them. So point is basically like five and two, it's really line string, sit. It's just like it, there are, the, every point are separated by the comma. This is a simple polygon without all, and this is a more complex polygon with all. All is what we call sometimes an entire ring, a ring, uh, entire boundary also. So you know, like the so you have like basically like a polygon is a complete line. So you have a complete line string here, like you see, like it's it should end by the first point, so zero 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 zero, and the same for the entire ring, or there will not be a standard a multi-point is a bit more small more than one point multi-line string the same and geometry collection is like we are adding um this um this type together can i go back to my screen not this one firefox can you show me where are you i had mac can i see show window not this one, I don't care. Here, yeah. good. So um, let's focus a bit like in this uh, graphics that they provide. Uh, so basically like if you want to start uh, building an object from scratch, keep in mind like most of the time you're gonna load the geometry from another um, uh, or the, the data from another source like a shape file, uh, geo package uh, or just a stream, uh, plenty of other formats. 
but they are the most common ones, I guess, your package and shape file. Uh, GeoJSON also. So you can build in with SF provide basic function like ST point, ST li string. So this is an example. So to tell R, like uh, uh, you need to combine the two the two values here in, and wrap them into the ST point function. And then um, what we're gonna do is like we are converting this uh, SFJ object, which is stand for simple features geometry, if I correct. Yeah. And then uh, we're gonna add column. So, uh, and basically by doing that, we're gonna provide it a, a coordinate reference system. And uh, so we are here. And then we can add a data frame that's providing information. So here you're gonna go create a small, uh, simple features objects um, that's uh, calling all of this function. So it's kind of tedious. And as we're gonna see uh, some, so, First one points, uh, so SF also provide uh, three dimension points and even um, four dimension points. You have like various ways of writing that. So for points, it's 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 start it's easy if you want to start with line. It's become like a lot of C uh, C C C C everything, and uh, polygon and polygon all it become very tedious. But it's useful to sometimes it's useful if you want to do it because like it's um, uh, sometimes you want to build small example and it's useful to know like the, the whole process. That's and so if you want to build small example, you want to test something, it, it's good like to build it from scratch. And it's not that difficult once you understand, it's just a bit tedious. So basically, like if I if I if I type that ST points, uh, I will do that. Like ST, uh, I will just go points. <laughs> uh, let's say the, the the one I should have called it. Like I should have been more lazy and call it back here. Here, that clean a bit. Lost in stupid parentheses. It just give me like points zero and one. What you expect? The, what the standard expect? Okay. Let's go back here. Uh, yeah, be careful. Like this is like, uh, yeah, doing all is a bit more complex. Um, so basically, like when we are doing like this London example, we just have built for, uh, or just the points. Like if, if I just do, uh, let's say uh, as this, we just I just uh, stsf. I just have one point, and basically, if you want column, well, you need and the column have a meaning. You need to stack points. This is how you do it. You you just add point to point to point, which is basically the same as uh, let's see where it is. Do we have a collection of points somewhere? Mm, no, but let's let's do it then. So it's it's you can like either do bob equal uh, st points. I mean get. Oh yeah. So the book use um, this syntaxes. So I shall use it also, which is a, an assignment by equal. But in R, you can also use this assignment. Use both you like. So if the book uses it, I should use this one. Combine uh, 0, 1, and build. Yeah, I'm not very original. That's the points. Let's see. Oops. Oops, and let's be original three two. Oops, and then uh, you can combine them. I'm not doing that all the time. STFCC, my friends. Oops, sorry. Uh, STSFC, yes, this one. Uh, Bob and Bill. And no, I have a. And I can plot it by the way instead of watching it. Here we are. Eh. Why two points? Wonderful. Uh, yes, so that's it. But yeah, what I wanted to say is like I could have right directly, let's say that here. I could have done also this version, which is 
the same area or I don't know, remember for three two or something like that. And oh, yep. You see what I got wrong? This is a stay point. Ugh. So super tedious, no? I will do it because sometimes you need to do it. Good. And now I can plot it and basically the same. Okay. So we have seen how to build it. Uh, if we do uh, STCRS of friends, this is a payment that ask for the comma. Uh, it does not have so NA. So we can attribute one. How do we do that? Um, <laughs> We can either where we build the SDFC design, uh, add one. Here we know like the uh, uh, European petrol uh, uh, PSG. Let's go. Like, sweet. So people do not know it. I can't pronounce it correctly. So, mm -mm. so the European Petroleum Survey GIS consortium. I don't remember. What's the G for? Someone can cut me. What's the G stand for? Anyway, the mining and oil industry at once uh, needed to make more sense of where uh, the stuff was. And so they build this and we are still using it. Survey group, thanks. <laughs> and, um, and this is where like, so they become like kind of an authority of referencing this co coordinate system. And so when we want to point to a coordinate reference system here, Basically, we can uh, we are using the authority we are describing as the authority and the code, and sometimes just the code works. But you can have other authorities and uh, this group. You can have S three, for example, uh, is an authority, a national some national agency, cartography agency, uh, are valid authority too, and so this is a way of describing it. And if you ask for it, uh, not print only the four line, print everything. Uh, now it's print the old uh, coordinate reference system and how it works as a WKT format. This is what it said here. So it, it's a, like you ask it for a coordinate reference system. Your input was that, and I return you as a well-known text. Uh, getting a lot of information, we will go into that information later. Uh, I have an example where we delete it and see what happens, et cetera, et cetera. If you want less tedious, uh, if you want to build object with a less tedious way, I recommend uh, the SF header package. It's fully, comp and the book also, it's fully compatible with SF. It's a, also a bit less verbose to build stuff. Like you can build it like that way. I will not go too much into it because we are lacking time. Uh, it's called header because like you can implement basically like every um, function here. It's, it's uh, every SF uh, function. Is also linked to a C implementation that you call call if you want fast computing. That's why. Uh, it's also a very good uh, package that's good at casting. So it's very good if you want to transform, let's say, a line string to uh, points or points to line string, et cetera, et cetera. SF also has that, but uh, SF headers uh, uh, have another philosophy. Okay, sp spherical geometry. Long for a long, long for a long time, we just uh, when we were wanting to do like some uh, operation, uh, we needed to project everything into a plan and use like Cartesian geometry uh, because or not bother recalculating every angle every time. No, with the library S two, and we can basically check if you have it loaded by typing that. It will return to use it. Yes, and you can set false and it will use it. And uh, this is this is an example. Um, so use SF use S2 false. It switched off. Uh, it uses another library. So you have two library, two back end library to do like all this buffer, all of the special predicate, all the special operation. They are done by default, usually by geos. And uh, if you are working on a geometric uh, coordinate system, lat long as example. Uh, you will use it as to which basically divide the globe in a grid 
Another example, the famous one is H3. That's used a lot for when you want to uh, display data on a big scale. Uh, and yeah, so the, uh, an example, I'm a bit uh, in a so I will not go through it, but it's it's for a new users, it's, it's good, but you have to remember, uh, and we will see it a lot in the geographical uh, that uh, project chapter seven, like you can generate some weird stuff, but it's it's very convenient. So I will go quickly. So we have seen like this point and all do SF on all these point line and polygons. Now we are gonna see like rasters, um, data model, which is basically a grid. Um, the, the book focused on regular grids, uh, but the other exists. I will not go into it, but usually like when you have like curve that like that, uh, they are useful. Uh, the raster data uh, model consists usually of an header. So at the top of the file, you have information like the coordinate reference system, the extent, which basically uh, record the number of colon because it's a grid. So you have like colon and row and the size of every cell and the origin. By convention, usually it's on the lower half here. Uh, it makes sense because like you just want to uh have like your drawing place um like you can only add and you do not go negatives it's it's make e stuff easier uh, if but sometimes it's on the top uh left and then like you have to go on the um, nothing um uh, negatively or on the y axis anyway uh Raster does not need to store services at every cell. Yeah, because they store it at the headers. Oh yeah, sorry. Second part of it. So you have like a description of all the, all the, the data is organized and then you have the data as a matrix. Um, mm -mm. Uh, some raster in SK are very good like to see that, but I do not have one. Uh, so it's it's very convenient because they store it on, on text, but I do not have some, so anyway. So it does not need to store the co the co the coordinate system at every point because uh, you are just multiplying stuff. Uh, thanks to that and the idea of multiplying stuff from the locate or what we call map algebra, we'll see that later. They are very handy for faster processing, but by default, a sum can only contain a single value. If you want more value, you basically like need to stack them <laughs> of multiple layers. Uh, in air, we have two. Uh, you have a lot of. I have some packages that deal with raster data. Uh, before, like we have the raster package, and now it evolved in Terra. So this is the same people behind it, same same uh, authors and maintainers. And it just like uh, at one point it's like instead of patching it, I prefer rebuilding one. And now you we also have stars, which is. The same maintainers that uh, at the Petma, and this is Roger Hidgemans um, for Terra and Rasters. And the, the, um, the stars uh, is by him, and it's 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 a different philosophy. So Raster and Terra focus on regular grid. Well, in Star you can have plenty of other grid. Uh, the focus is on one and multi-layered rasters, like a lot of the time the one you're gonna work with. Uh, while in, in star it's with raster data cube because stars is, also, is like conceived as a way to handle spatial temporal data. Um, Terra use C++ and C++ pointers. So you basically like storing the raster in your art, in your drive and just uh, adding pointer to it to manipulate it. It uses its own vector uh, data model. So if you use Terra and you have like small vector manipulation, uh, it provides some without you to the need to load uh, SF, but they are fairly straightforward to go from one to another. Uh, it relies on built-in functions that work on its object. So Terra implements its own objects that's called spat rasters. And um, uh, you have functions that's built on top of it. While the design of star kind of mimic the design of SF, it used a general function from R and implement method from them. For, for the users, it can be seen and more convenient, depending on what you like. 
and it relies for SF4 vectors. Uh, in both cases, I will say like raster should uh, always have uh, the same extents. You cannot, it's very, it's become cumbersome if you, may, if you handle raster with different extents. And uh, raster can be read in memory or just reading the metadata. So by memory, I mean the RAM or we're just uh, working with the data uh, in your hard drive or a remote hard drive. And they are very straightforward to convenience to each other. Use ST as stars um, or Rust to convert like the, the from raster to stars and from Rust to I mean this convert to as spat rasters if I'm correct. I'm not the huge remote sensing guy, so feel free like to correct me. Okay, like SP, you can still uh, find a lot of rasters codes. So deal with it <laughs> and that's what that's why it's useful to mention it so this is uh, but terra offer backward compatibility so if you call some function uh from raster it will work also in terra terra has the option to divide big raster in smaller chunk this is very neat so let's go into that uh, do we have time oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super uh, what should I do? What, what's your point? Like, should uh, I think it's good? Like, if we spend a bit of time uh, discussing it, do you have like remark? And we can, or should should do do? Are you in hurry? Like, do you think we can like spend like ten more minutes today? I need feedback. Yeah, it's okay for me. <laughs> okay. Is it good? Are you not dead? <laughs> okay. Fine, fine. If it's fine, I will, I will, I will try to complete. Then we can discuss it a bit. Okay. 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 I will st continue sharing it. The stream. Okay. So um, here, like, we are gonna use like a, a SRTM. Um, um, TIF, that TIF, uh, that's stored with SP data large. SP data large is not uh, in C run in CRAN because it's too big. <laughs> so, but uh, you can, you have obviously managed to download it. And it's basically like when it's, um, when you load the data with Rust, uh, it's not, it's, it's loading like reference to it. As you see, you can see like, if you display my Rust, you have like some information about it. It's the class is part rasters. It provides the dimension, the resolution, uh, the extend, which is basically x min, x max, y min, uh, y max, the coordinate reference system, the source. So here, yeah, just uh, search here, but it can be localized in other places, like even in remote machine, and the name, and the mean and max value of the matrix. Uh, you can have also like uh, you have plenty of nice function, um, like yeah, you just use the extends that's return the, the extends. That's basically that. But that's useful if you want to code with it. Like so, all these functions make your your coding uh, life easier. Uh, and here, like this is is it in memory? And no, it's not. It's 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 on my hard drive on where I loaded my package in my library. Uh, the same idea, you can plot it very quickly. I, I recommend doing it. Because I have seen way much too much question of people like, oh, I want to subset or extract. Let's say this, and I have all NA value. And usually, like doing a quick plot solve a lot of questions. You have also other functions like block RGB, like for uh, aerial photography. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you have like a multi layers, like you have like raster viz that's offer you like kind of the same idea that the plot for vectors. Go fast on that. You can drill them also by your, by hand if you want by providing the number row, the number call, the extend. You can also, I think, if I'm correct, you can provide the resolution and uh, some other. Yeah, I have a question. If you follow well, like yeah, and you can attribute the value for like the 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 matrix. Let's see, like let's do that quickly because it's not very intuitive every time I do it. So I assume for you it's the same. Let's do that. I mean, I can do it here. Here, it's loaded in my environment. Should be in your raster. Yeah, it's here. 
And if I plot new rasters, you will see like, so the value is like val, val equal one, two, three, like let's say like if I do that, it's basically start them from the top to the right, <clears throat> top left to the right. So unlike the origin when it starts here, the value are loaded uh, by row, you can, <clears throat> which is not the case by uh, if you use like, if you are familiar with other air way of doing that, of storing matrices, which is can be difficult. So just a reminder, it's always good to plot stuff. Uh, you can, if you have like a multi-layer one, which is the Landsat, uh, Landsat images here, that have like multiple channel. See here, you can ask the number of layers. It have four, we can see it also just loading like the headers of the, uh, the images. Uh, you can subset it, which is be careful. I should have added because subset sometimes is an air function also, but here it's smart enough to know like it's rasters and uh, it will like subset basically like this one. Uh, if you want like to just, you can also specify the name, doing a subset by the name and you can recombine them with just the combine uh, function. Be careful, as I have said, like the rest, what you are manipulating is mostly the link referencing to the data in, in your hard drive. So uh, if you want to save what you have done, it cannot be saved as uh, an RDS or RDI, which is common our uh, object to store binary. Uh, but you need to wrap the link or unwrap later the link references into object, or you can basically write a new raster. Okay, I will go very quickly in the project tech garden reference system because we will see that again and again. Two big kind of coordinate reference system: the geographic one, which is basically lat long, latitude longitude. I report you like the nas nas citation nas nice quote from the book which basically like for everyone who have trouble remembering it <laughs> basically like uh the x y the north source it's here yeah earth is not flat and it's not exactly a sphere and it's neither an ellipsoid both of them are good model for trying to locate everything into uh, the plane so a geographic coordinate system is using uh, an ellipsoid with two axes and um the polar one, which is like basically an ellipsoid, like think something like that. And you have one axis here, which is the minor one, and the bigger one, which is the major one. And if you have like all this information, you can build the ellipsoid. And then if you have the latitude and longitude, and you know where you start, you can localize yourself. The, oh, sure, sound trick. <laughs> it's a C uh, high here. So the datum, uh, which uh, will contain all of this ellipsoid information. It will also tell if you are using a geocentric one, which is try to modelize everything, or a local, local one, which will just uh, try to do it for a particular zone. The book contain, like I will show the a very nice, uh, I don't know where to take it, but it's very good. So let's go here. So basically like the geocentric datum is the, it's basically like, as I said, an ellipsoid uh, is not always, it's, it's the model, so it's not perfect. You see here, you see here. So here you should use a local datum even for geographic uh, coordinates. And this is the same here. But if you use your local datum, obviously it will be wrong on other parts. So making choice and picking the one that matches. And this, the book will introduce you how to work. So projected coordinate system here, you are in the plan. Uh, usually to be on the plan, you need to know where you are in some kind of ellipsoid. Uh, so this flat surface with uh, X, Y, or Esting and nothing origin. And you have a lot of different kinds of pro projection, the, the conic one, like, so you have the, the <laughs> I should have like an, an apple, and then you, you draw like some cones to, or like a, a cylinders, which is like the, Another one are the planners, which is basically like put a plan on it. Uh, units, units are tricky. Uh, so if you go like Luxembourg, just to, to you just want Luxembourg. And if you want like, uh, let's, I will do that. Because a CRS has also units and SF under units, 
which is good but bad sometimes uh, in your let's do that if i go luxembourg uh, i have just one object and uh, do i have error here now here i have error okay. it's probably in, kilo, in square kilometers and uh, if I want like ST era, it will probably be smart enough, but let's see if I haven't passed, sorry. Yeah, I'm stupid here. Yeah. Okay, so you see it's in meters. So if I do that and divide by whatever, it still think it's in meters. So if you want to do conversion with uh, uh, SF object, you need to use a state set units, and then it will be smart enough. For raster, it's a bit more simple, but uh, if you want to know uh, what's the resolution, you have this function. So that's it. It was a big chapter. <laughs> so, some do you want to do exercise? Do you want to discuss? It's more interesting if I'm not the only one to speak. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oliver. Uh, I just have one small question. Sure. In that example in which we had this uh, Bill and Bob, and we provided the uh, X, Y coordinates to each of the points and we plotted them, uh, how can we geotag the points? In the, uh, so if I want to give black long coordinates, not the X, Y coordinates, you mean like this example like the let's see if i i can rebuild it like said bill so bill is basically a st point so yeah i just building it. and to be a point it need two but we cannot produce two so yeah we have bill if we ask bill it's just a point currently so it's 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 a simple features and you want me to provide uh, what kind of more information. So we can also convert directly bill. Uh, let's say bill uh, with a capital bill will work. Uh, so could, no, could you uh, please uh, share your screen? Oh, you? yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, you are. Did you see it? So I have I have started create bill. So bill, uh, let's go back. Let's, let's go back slowly. So if I do class, let's see what I get from bill. Yeah. yeah. See, bill is just x y. It's a point, and it's a simple feature geometry. Let's say I want bill uh, to not be that to be a sim. So I can convert bill as a. Um, uh, Bilbo. Uh, Bilbo as ST SFC. Uh, uh, Bill. And I can give it a CRS. I think that will be from a PSG. And with zero at two, I better go that long. And now, if I do class Bilbo. I have a STFC point and STFC. And if I just do Bilbo, currently it have no information outside of the coordinate system, the points with no information. It have a bounding box, which is basically the X min, X, Y min, X max, Y max. It's a geometry type of points and it have nothing. So if I want to add information, I will have to add a data frame of it. Well, let's call it DF. Uh, data frame. Mm, let's go with um, uh, job. I think Bilbo was a chief, no? On adventure, something like that. Let's say adventure. Uh, and it was a uh, race hobbit. Okay. I don't know if it's spelled like that. Let's see DF. Okay. And if I remember correctly the function, I will just have to check it because I do not remember it. Bye. 
blah, 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 blah. it's browser here it's sdsf uh, let's see it like stsf yes so it's take uh, a colon element to be blinded into a sf object or a simple list i want to know if you prefer the object first or the data frame first but i guess you will be smart enough let's see and then i will add bilbo to df and see what happens and here i will store it like uh, uh, Tolkien. i have um, uh, so if we check Tolkien here we have a, we have like a simple feature collection with one features and two fields well it's kind of stupid obviously <laughs> storing an orbit as a point but uh yeah is it related to your question <laughs> yeah my uh, objective was for example if we plot a few points relative to each other yeah let's say um i do a survey of a um, area and i know that there are houses around yeah and then um i uh, so i may create an object which has the points as vector data points but yeah. after in my second step i would like to geotag those houses in my okay. area in my field so th that was so i know the relative positions of each of the houses yeah. but after that i would like to give the lat long coordinates so that was my objective uh what you want to do is what we call a special predicate and you have various ways of doing a special predicate <laughs> so it's uh i have like a short answer is you should do uh so you have points and let's say like to be simple is it you have point and you want to be how far some houses are from this point uh that i already uh, uh no uh, yes yes uh, uh i mean i know the um the relative locations of all the houses but yeah i would like to add the lat long coordinates and maybe yes after i add the lat long coordinates i could easily get the distance that's that's the yeah. third yeah so you want to add the lat long coordinates yes yes yes, yes. okay and uh all start all so you have like let's say house b and you want to and you have the location of house b and you have house c that's located in relation to house b okay well this is just math equation <laughs> so basically like uh, if you know like uh, basically like if house b is in let's say one one and you know like house c is plus 100 meters uh in the eastings and plus uh 200 meters like you can just do like that i guess let me do it um it just, see yeah like i have just added on both side then but you can you can you can be you can uh if can i do uh, just one i don't know and sure let's see i never tried that yes you can could you share the screen oh yeah sorry uh share screen uh here share so all these subjects just math i mean uh just basic so you can do basic manipulation so let's go back with bill bill is here uh, or bilbo we can also do it with bilbo uh so if I know like uh, the house of Bill is located zero two, and I know the, the house of Jim is located ten meters on the um, on the easting and three meters on the northing. So I will do Bill plus. Uh, so I said ten and three. 
And now this is the new lo the, the location of Jin. And I can attribute it. I can do it both way, but yeah. And the same, if you have like a relative location by one location, and if you are in a planar coordinate, you can just uh, do basic geometry. Obviously, I hope for you, like you have some way of doing it because it can be tedious. <laughs> so I a, a bit uh, longer, no? It's a, if you have like, I don't know how many houses do you have? <laughs> so I have around 500 houses. Yes. And it, it, let's say, let's, let, let's try like for the sake of it. So let me build, a, and you have the relative position of, for, let's say like you have a relative position from build. So let's build um, re, relates first as a vector of uh, all the vectors. Let's see if it will work. I don't know. I will do then. I think it's vectorized, but could be wrong. Uh, so if I do Jim plus relat plus, will it? Yeah, it works. No, no, it it tightened it with me. It multiply. Uh, uh, what was Bill? I don't remember. Jim, what was Jim? No. So Jim was ten. Five and I had uh, ten thirty and two four. So I guess you will have to find a better way of doing it. <laughs> but I have no idea. It's a good question. I will think about it. Do as I have solution. What I was thinking of was providing the lat long coordinates of one house, and yeah. then because we know the relative positions of all the other houses, then yeah. automatically they would map. I mean the lat long. It's kind of yeah, function. The, there is probably a to... there is probably a way of doing it, but yeah, I do not see how. But I think this is basically, uh, or maybe it's a for loop. I, I was what I was trying is like, uh, um, I was trying like to to see if it was vectorized, but I do not think it is. So maybe the idea is like just building a for loop, like for every relative position, like. It's 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 not that difficult, but uh, yeah, let's do live coding. Uh, so let's see, like, uh, so let's see what's that look like. Okay, it's not that I want that. I do not want that. I think I want. I want. I want. I want something like. Uh, I wanted that. Uh, I wanted data frame. I think. Well, I could want a list. So relate loss um, will be equal to um, data frame uh, with x equal uh, combine ten and two and y equal um, do, 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 three and four okay plus okay so now let's say like you this is the a relative uh location i don't know why you've called it loss uh Miss, uh, and now you want to add this location to Bill, to G, to Jim or Bill, whatever we we choose. So um, we can, I think, build for um, E in one to two. Let's say I should open a script here. I will solve it by the. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's open. Uh, a file because 
that will start to be messy here. I mean, it does not seem complicated to me, but here, and we have Jim that was defined. Uh, uh, a nice function also, like if sometimes you are lazy, you can use this deep boot, Jim. Oh, not very. Yep. Yeah, the same. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay, the same. So now we want to add, uh, you want to create a new object, new houses. Uh, that will be um, that we add to gym every, um, so this will be like, um, I don't know what can be objects. Any idea, everyone? I will go for it. I guess no idea. Should have the chat open, maybe. Um, <laughs> what should I do? And it will be like uh, it will add a new value. I mean, I just want to loop this. Uh, it's pretty simple, but let's build a loop, and then after we'll implement it. Uh, yeah, see you next session. So let's build a loop for uh, a in uh, 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 in um, n row of uh, atlas. It's not perfect loop. Uh, let's print uh, uh, the row. Let's go in slowly. Uh, row is first. Yeah. Just one. Why? How many rows do you have? No, I just want to loop over. So e in n row. Do I want too quickly? N row. Two. Yes. One, two. Okay, this is good. Then you can um, add. Uh, a new house. So this will be the new house. Will be like gym plus. That plus the x, and we need to generate I am to tie red a bunch of house. That will be the annual. This is bad, but it will work today. And I will open a bunch of house. Will be equal a bunch of house. This new house. Oops, combine, sorry, to be Python. Why, oh yeah, why does it not work here? I guess, let's say combine, but I do not think it will work. I want to add relation, oh yeah, it's a, it's a data frame. <laughs> it's a data frame um, SF. Well, this is bad, but SF header. Um, what's the SF header for points? ST points. SF points. I do not remember if it's this one. Let's see if it works. If I add a plate, 
plus one. Yep, that's good. So let's convert it. So my my the data structure are definitely not correct, but SF. I back you a quick solution. We should sync a bit more. Still not good. Why? Let's test it. Fast. Mm. One. Incompatible arguments. Oh yeah, maybe this. He does not like the fact that Jim is just a SFC object, a point object. So let's convert it. St. SFC. Let's test it here instead of doing the loop. Nope. Then I need to add it to STSFJ. Uh, no, STSF, I guess. Let's see if it will work. I'm like not sure if I can add that, but okay. First, will it not have I? Yep, it works. They need to be the same objects. And now if I, the bunch of house, you have a new, uh, generate a new, you have a list of uh, the points that was added. And is it good? Let me remind me. Well, that loss was 10, three, Jim was 10, five. So if I 10, three to 10, five, I have 28 and 12, nine. So it's good. So if you want, so this is a very quick and bad way to do it. I see, so thank you so much. So basically uh, we don't have a CRS for this, so if, but the X, Y coordinates are basically lat long, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, you made it was lat long, but if you define a coordinate reference system, it will be the same. It was just a pet example. Thank you, merci beaucoup. <laughs> You're welcome, bye.